Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a disease made up of chronic bronchitis and emphysema, and it's really it's a preventable disease, and it's defined as an airflow uh, limitation that's progressive over time, and it's associated with acute inflammation. Um, how it affects the lung is that over time you can have this damage to the lung and it causes destruction of lung tissue. So the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide that happens to the lung, they don't go together. Um, they don't function properly, therefore the oxygen doesn't get into the system uh, and that causes people to become more short of breath. And as you have more destruction of the lung, the lung itself becomes hyperinflated, becomes larger. And as it becomes larger and larger, the functionality becomes less and less. Patients with COPD, when you initially have it, you just have shortness of breath with exertion. You don't really notice it too much, but then as your disease gets worse and you have more progression of your disease, all the activities that you used to do that you didn't think about, going to the grocery store, playing with kids, your grandkids, become more and more taxing on the body. Approximately 12 million people have been diagnosed with COPD in America, and it's estimated that another 24 to 26 million people are undiagnosed. Spirometry is key. Not everyone that has a cough and is a smoker has COPD. They can have other diseases, such as pulmonary fibrosis. They can have asthma. Uh, smoking is, is related to COPD, but it's related to other diseases as well. So spirometry is a very key component for people to do. I think everyone that has a diagnosis of COPD should be tested for alpha-1 antitrypsin as the disease management is, is different from just straight COPD. Everyone, doesn't matter what kind of degree of COPD you have, you should have all your yearly influenza vaccine. You should get your um, pneumonia shot every five years and exercise. Pulmonary rehab is a multidisciplinary approach to helping patients improve their exercise tolerance, quality of life, um, and also help with some of their life psychological conditions associated with having problems with breathing. It's made up of a nurse, a respiratory therapist, a physical therapist, and a physician, and they work together to give the patient more education about the disease. Uh, they give them exercise regimen that they're supervised and they're watched while they do it. And it also allows these patients an inter opportunity to interact with other people that have chronic respiratory diseases. Other things that they can have done if they need it, if they meet requirements, are oxygen therapy. Oxygen can definitely, we know, helps improve survival, like we talked about, can also improve the quality of, of life as they can do more activities. The mainline therapy is really um, based around bronchodilators. So you have beta agonists and you have anticholinergics, and they work in different ways, but their primary function is to increase and open up the airways so that you're able to get more air into the lungs. Patients that had poor exercise capacity and upper lobe predominant emphysema, so most of the lung that was in the upper lobe was destroyed and hyperinflated, they, they had a survival advantage to having this lung volume reduction surgery. What they do in that surgery is they do cut the upper portions of your lung, which is all the disease lung, and that allows your normal lung to expand more and have more exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Another thing that can be done with patients that have refractory COPD to medications is that people can look at lung transplant. Uh, lung transplant has been shown in numerous studies to have improved quality of life in all patients that undergo it. What I use is I look at something called the Bode Index. Uh, it looks at its uh, prediction scale, prediction score, in patients with COPD to see if they, uh, what are their chances of survival at certain amounts of time. Bode Index stands for body mass uh, index, the degree of obstruction, the dyspnea score, and their, and their exercise capacity as measured in a six minute walk test. And once that score is greater than five, I think it's imperative to send those patients to a transplant center to talk to them about transplants so they know that that potential therapy does exist. Currently, there's a clinical trial that's being done in the United States, including the Memphis University of South Carolina, where um, they use bronchoscopically placed coils. So they go with a bronchoscope through your mouth into your lung, uh, into the upper lungs where you have the diseased COPD lung, and they put a coil, which initially as it goes in is nice and straight, and then as you take the sheath off, it coils down and causes the diseased lung to retract. That's been around in Europe since the early to mid-2000s and it's been shown repeatedly to have improvement in people's exercise capacity and also in their quality of life. So, and the lead investigator of that clinical trial is, is Charlie Strange, who works here at the Medical University of South Carolina. I think pulmonary rehabilitation is a key component for everyone. 
from very mild disease to very severe disease, I think helping them improve their exercise capacity will improve their quality of life. Lung transplant is something that can be used in patients and select patients with COPD. We are a transplant center here at the Medical University of South Carolina and we do see patients with severely advanced COPD that require lung transplantation. They all have a much significantly improved quality of life post-transplant.